Nope. <clears throat> nope, that still doesn't look right to me. It's still just a little bit off. So we're going to take him out of it. And let's try this. Ah, uh, yeah, that seems better. Oh, hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And today <clears throat> we're going to take a look at the Walgreens exclusive uh, Titans Return Deluxe Class Brainstorm and Tesslore. Now, I don't live in the United States. I don't have any kind of a P.O. box down there or an ability even from my location to jump across the border. So how did I get this guy? Stick around, I'm going to talk about everything to do with this guy, how I got him, what I think of him, and everything else in the latest Gatba True Review. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, and check me out everywhere. And uh, we're going to take a look at this guy right away. You see him with the other, uh, we'll call him the Headmaster Brethren. Um, and and he, I must. Honestly, he looks good, I think, although I didn't mean to tip him over. Just sort of happened a little bit. I think he looks good. Um, he is... Why does? Why do you not want to stand up, hardhead? Be a pal. There you go. Be a pal. Um, he looks good. I, he's a little more slight than the other three, but I feel like that that makes sense. Uh, you know, he's the brainy one, and I always felt like he wasn't quite as brawny as the uh, the other guys who were a little more combative, we'll say. Uh, so he looks good with them. I took a look at uh, a hard head in episode 151 in full. Uh, I took a look at <clears throat> highbrow and a couple of little customizing touches I did on him in episode 175. And I took a look at this guy, uh, Chrome Dome, who I think is absolutely spectacular, in episode 176. Uh, we're going to bring him over just a little bit. And he looks great. Um, the other comparison, uh, if not two comparisons, that I think are worth making, and I'll just adjust this a little bit here. I think the other two comparisons probably worth making are with his G1 counterpart. Um, and you can certainly see the homage from the, the two toys. The green on the Titans Return a version is a really close match to that G1 green. And not perfect, it's a little bit darker, um, ever so slight. But it is certainly indicative of it. The stickers on the shoulders of this guy are kind of shown on the wing pieces of the Titans Return figure. The darker grays are kind of where they should be. The lighter grays are kind of where they should be. I've also learned that I had this sticker put on upside down. Um, you can see here with the nice tampograph that matches this sticker better. What can I say? I was a little kid. Uh, the only two things that don't really match up. This guy has gray hands. This guy has gray forearms, but the hands are not gray. And up on the chest, above his cockpit section, there's a little gray on the Titan Return version. That is also missing. And of course, with the G1 version, you have the tech specs. That's missing on all of these Titan Returns guys. However, that being said, the Titans Return version doesn't suffer from his faceplate falling down into his face. So that is, uh, I, I think, a, a pretty great win. We're going to take a look at the two uh, headmasters a bit closer in a little, in a little while. 
Uh, and the last... I guess comparison worth making is the mold that he's based on, which is Titans Return Blur. Um, and I took a look at Blur, I believe in episode 138 in full. Uh, a few things that I want to note here. A lot of people have complained and said that they find that the Titans Return Brainstorm feels like, you know, just Blur with wings. I don't, I don't find that. The feet, the lower legs, the upper legs, the little flat piece of the stomach, and the rest of the main torso is the same. Repainted, not remolded. The head is obviously remolded. Um, and on the arms, these sections that fold out to cover the fists, they are remolded. You can see that they're more pointed on blur and they're more... I don't want to say rounded, but they're they're certainly shorter on uh, Brainstorm. And the entire upper forearm, uh, I guess I should say the fist and the lower forearms are the same. The entire upper forearm is totally remolded. It is based on this, but it is a heavy remold. Uh, with the little tiny front wing pieces, they are attached, they do not move. The back wing pieces, every time I see this guy, every time I see this guy, everybody has his wings left out like this. And I think that that is pretty good for IDW homage. I feel like his wings are higher. It sort of matches with that Voyager version we got. And it sort of matches with the, the way he appears in the comics. And the paint scheme that he got in that three pack that I think it was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. The paint scheme that he had in that was a lighter blue on the body and kind of light blue down on the uh, shins kind of, I think, matches his appearance in the comics as well. So I, I get that. To make him a little more G1-esque, I find that if you bend those wing pieces all the way back, it sort of helps a little bit. It would be nice, actually, if these were, I think, a bit lower, personally speaking. Uh, that being said, the other remolded piece is this entire canopy section. And I'm gonna tell you now, it is colored beautifully. The paint on that is amazing. It looks fantastic. And it is such a good color match to the pieces that are molded in green. This whole canopy section, I do believe is painted green and is actually more of a gray color. If you look at, I'll show it later when I take it off. For now, the only other thing I wanted to know is and I'm going to take these out. On the canopy, you'll notice that there's a little notch here, but of course all of this is filled in with plastic. A while ago when I done Blur, I discussed a mod that I did so that his Headmaster unit, unit Hyperfire, does not have to be removed. Here are the two canopies, with and without the mod, side by side. You can see what it was I cut out and what it was that I left. Um, or what it is that, you know, it looked like originally, basically, because that part of the canopy is the same. So you can see, it, it, it takes a nice bit of cutting in order to allow Hyperfire <clears throat> to kind of slide through there without having to be removed. Okay, so that was a lot of kind of, we'll call it administrative stuff to get out of the way early on. Of course, how dare I forget? How dare I forget another couple of things? Sorry, I'm gonna lay him aside and I'm gonna show you the packaging. Let's back this up. Ooh, let's back this up. There's the packaging. Actually, I really like it. I love the yellow background. It, it, it's a piece of packaging that actually kind of stands out. Um, you know, there it is on back in his bio and the product shops and all that good stuff. And of course, we have the ever popular collector card and the art it does look nice i'll give credit where credit is due it looks nice it looks very brainstorm-esque and i dig it on the back of course as always we have the tech specs and i think that this is a time where they're actually pretty pretty accurate <clears throat> pardon me accurate i mean his his intelligence is definitely the highest He's not quite as much of a fighter, that's why his fire blast is what it is, but he is certainly a bit stronger than I thought, and his speed makes sense. So taking that out of it, 
and <clears throat> bringing this guy back in we'll adjust again here uh, bring this guy back in uh, paint apps honestly uh, when I first took him out and I first saw him, and I have mistaken him in going around here and getting ready to do this, I have mistaken him for the G1 version a bunch of times until I get him in my hand and say, hey, no, it's not the G1 version. I think the guy is easily a nine and a half. Now I know what you're gonna say. Some people are going to be out there and argue and say, no, he most certainly is not a nine and a half. And I hear you, I do. If your association with the character. If your association with him is through the comics, then honestly, I would suggest to you that the, you know, that three pack version or the uh, Voyager class version is probably more accurate. If you are a fan of the Headmaster series, well, of course, his body is basically kind of a blue there and the Darker gray, this guy's pretty much black there. He has a face instead of a faceplate. Hey, I, I, I get it. Um, even in the Rebirth episode, his green was a bit darker. He certainly has his gray, um, you know, up above his canopy cockpit section there. His hands should be gray. And even with his head, which we will look at closer shortly, even with his head, um, there should be yellow kind of up around the eyes instead of just on the faceplate. But the paint is so crisp and well applied here. And I've seen versions of that Voyager one and the paint looks so sloppy to me that I absolutely love it. Plus I feel like he's so indicative of the um, G1 version that we looked at earlier. I, I don't know how to mark this guy down on paint. I think it turned out fantastic. Personally speaking, to be fair, because I know a lot of people got problems with it, I should probably give his paint about a seven. It's good, but it's not great. For me personally, and the aesthetic that I'm looking for, even when the Voyager one came out, I said to myself, it's not quite right. He doesn't look or feel quite right to me. And I said, then, I think that a deluxe version would be better. And some people would even say that this is too small. So many incarnations of this character, and uh, a lot to kind of take in that it is really difficult to grade him. So for me personally, nine and a half. On the whole, I could see how some people would probably mark it down to a seven. But the quality is there. It looks so good, it's so crisp, and, and has a kind of a gloss to it. Um, articulation, well, it's the exact same as Blur. We don't, we, we, you know, we have a waist on a mushroom peg. Uh, blurs, I believe, kind of pops off the mushroom peg sometimes. That doesn't happen with this guy, or it hasn't yet. Leg all the way out and back and 90 degree knee bend. We have a thigh swivel, the toes can tilt up if that's any good to you. Um, they go all the way out to the side, so that's great. The arms can rotate all the way around 360. We have a bicep swivel. We have a 90 degree elbow. I wish the elbow actually was able to bend a bit deeper, but that's because of something I would like to try transformation. That's just not possible. Still, 90 degree elbow, I mean, it's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and nothing at the wrist. Oh, the wrist do swivel. Look at that, the wrist swivel. Um, the head can go left and right and look up a little bit and down a little bit. It's pretty solid in there. These wing pieces, they move. And I guess that's about it. But, you know, he does pretty much anything you'd want him to do. And he <clears throat> he is uh, solid when he stands. I'm impressed. I, I'm giving it a... Honestly, I'm giving it a 9. And when he's in, in his vehicle mode, pff, I mean, he's a fine space plane. I'm giving that a 9. I think it's really fantastic. So, so far for me, he's got a 9 and 9.5. And he's scoring a 9.25. I'm so impressed with this guy. Uh, we're going to take off his head, and I'll take this guy out of it. And we'll look closer at the head. 
Uh, there you go. I mean, it's a beautiful looking head sculpt. Um, I, I can understand people wanting to have the yellow up around the eyes. I get that. That, that makes sense. Um, but it's painted really, really, really well. So that being said, and I'll take that out of it. That being said, here we have the G1 and the Titan, obviously the G1 being much bigger. The gray on the G1 is a little bit darker, but I, I always thought that the gray should be a little bit lighter. So, you know, there you go. I never liked that the G1 one had the yellow eyes. I, I always wanted him to have blue eyes, which he now has. I don't know how well that's showing up, but he does have the blue eyes. There you go. Obviously, to change this guy, you do the same thing as with all of them. You just you know, open them at the legs. He is the exact same mold as used for a hy hyperfire. Uh, the paint on the face is pretty crisp. He has the exact same articulation. Uh, and it, you know, it, these little guys, they're too. <clears throat> you know, overall they are what they are. Uh, here he is with Arcana. Uh, or Arcana. Tesla is the Titan's return one. Arcana is who he originally was, you know, from G1. Assuming you go by the North American G1. I do wish that the head was uh, painted gray to match the body in the Titan's Return version, just because that's the way it, it should be, both in animation and in toy. But still, it's a pretty good homage, and you can see kind of how close the greens really are to each other. It's it's a nice homage. It really is a nice homage. So taking both of those off again and bringing in with his head reattached Brainstorm. We can go back here and re totally remove his canopy just like we can with Blur and up and underneath we still have a Gray peg here. Let's see if I can do do it this way. Here you go. Gray peg here, and this gray peg goes into a hole on the blaster, and that's really what secures it in there. But the gray peg there and the gray pegs on the back, I think that's the color of the plastic used. It's been painted this brilliant, brilliant greeny color. These guns in front don't detach. I'm okay with that because, to be honest with you, um, if you watched my review of the original one, I lost those somewhere along the way. The gun is the exact same one that comes with uh, blur. It's nothing special. But the gun is molded in that color and the canopy is painted that color. And it's a fantastic color match between both of them. So impressed. Uh, again, just like blur, you can not only attach the gun underneath, if it wants to attach underneath, but you can bring out a little gray skid plate here in the canopy, and we'll lay that down. And you could take Tesla off, and of course, he could still sit here in the cockpit section and either be held as a weapon or peg onto the vehicle mode and be this gun slide. I, I, I don't know. Um, the fact is, I'm never ever in a million billion years going to do that. It's nice to have the play value if somebody digs that. Uh, it's a nice feature to have, but, you know, and you can also take the gun out and use that same peg uh, and put it into one of the slots on the forearms right here or of course there's one on the other forearm as well and this can act as a like a canopy shield put the gun in his hand he holds it in either hand just fine it's solid and you can give him you know a look that's kind of like that you know if you want him to have the canopy shield and Maybe an extra couple of blasters. I could do that. I might do that at some point. But it's not the way that I think I'm going to normally um, display him. So we're going to take this off his arm. And we're going to take his blaster out. I'm going to put both of those back together. 
and then there's a couple of slots here and here that go over slots here and here. If you know the blur mold, you've already seen that. And we have him back in robot mode. He's scoring really, really well. I am very, very impressed. Let's run him through the transformation. I'm not gonna spend much time on it because we already saw a blur. I've been talking for a while because there was surprisingly a lot to talk about with this guy. Fold up the feet and fold these pieces out over the hands, straighten the arms, fold these pieces out over the hands and straighten the arms. Put the wings down straight like that for now and remove Tesla. And that's what he looks like now. We take the canopy section and we bring it all the way up and peg it in. We unpeg the arm and we unpeg the arm and we'll just sort of leave them free flowing there for now. We come to the legs and open the leg up, open the leg up. In this leg over here, there is a little fin right there. Bring out the little fin. Fold it all the way to the back. Fold up, uh, sorry, not fold up a leg yet. Open up the canopy section, fold down his stomach piece. Bring the canopy section back down there. Like that. Fold the leg up and over. Fold the leg up and over. Peg the legs together, and these pieces of the shin that you opened up, just close them back in. Come to the arms that you unpeg from the body, here and here on this armature. Turn them around, bring them down. Turn them around and bring them down. When you bring them down, this gray pauldron on the shoulder will go into a spot, a space right there. Oh no. The danger is you're gonna push that canopy section down. Push it in, push it in. There are a couple of little pegs here on front. You push them tight and push them tight. You can take Tesla and put him in the cockpit and close it up and boom, there you go, brainstorming vehicle mode. And personally I love it. I do not think that it looks like blur with wings at all. The <clears throat> whole front canopy section here is molded out to a point as it should be. I think it looks like Brainstorm. In fact, here is the Titan's Return version. Here is the G1 version. Let me see if I can show this better. There they are. Underneath, on top, a back view, but like, if you have both of these, you know, if you, if you have these two, like this, I, I'm sorry, I, granted, the G1 has two fins, two small fins uh, on either side of the cockpit. This guy has one fin in the middle. Um, besides that, they both go out to a point. I don't, the bigger wings are shaped a little bit different. But I think it looks like Brainstorm. I, I think it's great. The only thing I would have liked to be able to do is, and this was where I talked about the elbows earlier, it would have been nice if you could take this whole section uh, right here that's pegged onto the side and fold it down and under. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how that would have affected him being able to you know, rest on the ground or how streamlined he'd be. But honestly, I... I, I just wanted to try it. Does it hurt my enjoyment of this figure? Not in the least. His transformation is exactly like Blur's. I think it's pretty great. It's a solid 8. Overall, I think that Brainstorm, that this Brainstorm turned out really well. I am 
Personally, I'm glad I didn't get the Voyager Class 1 because it didn't feel right to me. Great, great figure, and if you like him and you have him in your collection and he fills a brainstorm need for you, then hey, good on you, great. I personally prefer this guy. I'm glad that I waited for him. I don't know if he's so much uh, a better toy per se, but I think he's the version for an update that I always wanted. And I'm so glad to have him. Anyway, that's my take on this guy. I guess the only question left to answer is how did I manage to score this guy? Like I said, I don't live in the States and I can't jump across the border. Well, I, I, you know, I don't have a, a P.O. box or anything like that. None of, none, you know, none of that stuff. So how did I manage to get him? Well, I was very lucky. Um, I had a uh, supporter of mine who, who kept an eye out for me. He was willing to uh, get him and, and ship him to me. Uh, I, I didn't take that option, though. I really do appreciate the. Uh, being, you know, being kept in mind and being thought about, it means, it really does mean a lot to me. Small things, folks, small things make all the difference sometimes. I was lucky, I had family that uh, traveled there. In truth, this guy's actually, um, after this review, he's actually going to <clears throat> have to go back in the box because he's technically a Christmas gift for me from my uh, from my mom. I have also talked about my family many times here on the channel and how supportive they all are of what I do and I, I appreciate them and love them dearly for it. But there is another method. Uh, as of this recording, he is available on BBTS and uh, you know, we're in that big buying season. Uh, you know, the biggest buying day is just coming around the corner. Well, there's an option for you. Um, I, you know, what can I say? If you look hard enough, where there's a will, there is a way, and I am so glad that I willed my way into getting this guy. I think he's a win, I really enjoy him. Hopefully, if you're in for him, you do too. I think he matches with the, you know, the other uh, figures in the line really well, and that makes all the difference to me in enjoying him. Anyway, that's it folks. Thanks for dropping by and giving me some of your valuable time. Stick around, check out the channel and the playlist and see what might catch your attention. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.